Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to discuss very important topic. Every one of you may be familiar with facio maxillary injuries. So today we will talk about the nasal bone injuries. So let's start it. Now regarding the trauma to the face or facial maxillary injuries, we anatomically divide it into three portions. The upper third of the face is that portion which is above the level of supraorbital ridge. So you can very well imagine that it includes the frontal bone and frontal sinuses. Then middle third of the face which is very important because so many structures are there this is the area between supraorbital ridge and the upper teeth and the lower third which includes basically the mandible and uh, lower alveolus along with the lower teeth. So this is the middle third of the face we are concerned with today and this middle third of the face it contains uh, right and left maxilla. Then it contains uh, two palatine bones which form the floor of the nasal cavities. In the lateral wall of the nose there are two inferior turbinates. It has got two zygomatic arches on either side along with the zygomatic process of the temporal bones on right and left side. In the nasal septum we know it has got one vomer along with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. And there are the pterygoid plates of the sphenoid also. So, so many important structures there in the middle third of the face. But today we will focus on basically on the nasal bones and the nasal septum. This is the framework of the external nose in the picture. And fracture of the nasal bones, they are very common. Rather, they say this is the third most common fracture of the body because of its position it is projecting on the face so it is very fragile to injuries traumatic force which can cause this injuries it may act from front or from the side and that magnitude of the force will determine the extent of the disease because whenever there is trauma necessarily it does not mean that it will affect only one bone are one organ rather it can affect all the organs or the bones in the vicinity and here we can very well imagine that uh, there are small bones all around so uh, injury or uh, fractures may be extensive as it may look like on the first uh, examination of the patient so this is the external framework and uh, you can here very well see that these are the two nasal bones right and left and then there are upper lateral cartilages right and left and lower lateral cartilages on either side with this medial crura and lateral crura of this lower lateral cartilage. Then here in this portion of the ala of the nose there is fibro -fat fatty tissue along with some sesamoid cartilages and this portion in between two upper lateral cartilages this is the upper border of the septal cartilage which is marked as a yellow line here in this picture. Again the nasal bones are there right and left. So this is a uh, upper border of the nasal septal cartilage which is sandwiched here between the two upper lateral cartilages. So broken nose it is basically a break or crack in the nasal bone often the bone over the bridge of the nose uh, as I just mentioned because of its protruding position and fragility it is very vulnerable and one of the most common facial injuries. The force which is required to fracture the nasal uh, structures very little even equal to 25 pounds of pressure is sufficient to cause the fracture. Uh, usually the causes which are sports, contact sports especially for example this uh, boxing, uh, judo karate or uh, rugby, then physical fights, assaults, domestic violence, then Road traffic accidents is one of the major causes of facial injuries, so causing the nasal bone fractures as well. 
then children we know that when they start crawling or they start walking they are more prone to fall down over the hard floor or against the objects like chairs tables so they may get get injury to the nasal bones or face and then even old age people they may fall down suddenly due to syncope or due to impaired balance and may get the injuries so types of the nasal fractures will depend upon from which side the force or impact is coming so according to that it may be depressed fractures or these can be angulated fractures so this depressed fracture as you can see in the picture this is a rugby football that flow this blow will be from the front and what will happen that the lower part of the nasal bones will easily give way these nasal bones they they have got the lower part is thinner as compared to the dense thicker upper part of the nasal bones so lower third or half of the lower nasal bones they are more prone to injuries especially during this frontal blow and if the blow is a bit severe one what will happen there will be what we call as open book fracture that the nasal septum is collapsed and nasal bones they are splayed outwards so just like as we open the book so that's what we call as open book fracture and even if the force is uh, force intensity of the force is even greater then there can be comminuted fracture of the nasal bones which can involve the frontal process of the maxilla along with the flattening and widening of the nasal dorsum so this is sketch that how these nasal bones will be affected when the blow is from the front if the blow is from the lateral side especially during assaults or fights there can be simply the depression of the nasal bone on the side if the blow is mild in intensity but if the force is more not only the there may be fracture of the nasal bone on the ipsilateral side but paradoxically the contralateral side will also be fractured so there will be bilateral nasal bone fractures along with the deviation of the nasal septums and these these nasal fractures they are usually associated with nasal septal fractures or deformities like nasal septum can be buckled or dislocated from especially the anterior nasal spine or there may be comminuted fractures so diagrammatically this is that if force is mild the fracture like this ipsilateral and contralateral and if force magnitude is greater then there will be the septal dislocation also along with the bilateral nasal bone fractures so this is how it can look like on external examination deviation of the nasal bridge now there are different classification systems of the nasal fractures i will go through quickly these because according to these classifications it may help out for to manage the individual patients according to the severity of the disease uh, this these uh, gentlemen roy and kaili they just simply described it according to the impact of the injuries that if there is lateral nasal injuries or there is anterior nasal injuries but uh, there was no impact fact this uh, was uh, mentioned about the force how much force is involved and which bones are being involved so these were the drawbacks in that then murray's pathological classification that they dropped different weights on the cadavers and according to the magnitude of uh, the force that is in the form of the weights they uh, studied the nasal pyramid fractures so fracture lines were described and particular reference was directed to involvement of the septum in uh, deviated noses this is more practical classification by rorich according to this there are five uh, types so type 1 is simply that unilateral or ipsilateral nasal bone is fractured type 2 is when both nasal bones are fractured type 3 is comminuted now this comminuted again it can be unilateral or it can be bilateral or it can involve the frontal process of the maxilla that it is not only confined to the nasal bones but it has gone beyond the nasal bones to involve the frontal process of the maxilla then type 4 is a bit complex in which some other complications especially like septal hematoma along with the fracture of the nasal bones or there may be it may be associated with open nasal lacerations on the external nose and type 
as you will see that it involves the naso orbito ethmoidal complex and there is fracture of all these structures so this is more extensive injuries or mid face fracture that it is involving other bones in the middle third of the face then we call it as type 5 fractures so it, it is the normal then here it is unilateral only one side of the bone nasal bone is fractured here it is bilateral along with the septal fracture here it is open book that the nasal bone this uh, nasal septum is being pushed inwards and the nasal bones they are splayed out this is impacted portion this is green stick that there is no external deformity but still there is hairline fracture and this is the comminuted one this may be associated with the uh, laceration skin lacerations over the external skin as well then Stans and Robertson they described it again that frequently occurring was when the blow is from the lateral side or there can be a frontal impact which then subdivided into plane 1 2 and 3 this is the description of that I will not go to detain that much detail you can check it out from the literature or from your book also if you are interested but for undergrads not that much details is required so lower third portion lower thin portion as I told you this will be plane one or type one when the lower thinner portion as compared to the upper dense nasal bone uh, portions so that can be fractured then in class two it will involve the thicker proximal portion of the nasal bones and not only the nasal bones but it will involve the uh, perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vomer as well and even it can extend up to the quadrilateral cartilage in the nasal septum and in uh, class three the nasal bones will be pushed under the frontal bones and ethmoidal labyrinth may also be involved then AO classification was that laterally displaced fractures posteriorly depressed fractures then disarticulation of the lateral cartilage anterior nasal spine fracture and involvement of the nasal septum so this is laterally displaced fractures this is posteriorly dis depressed fractures inside then disarticulation of the that nasal bones are okay but the upper lateral cartilages they are displaced laterally and anterior nasal spine the nasal septum is dislocated from there so nasal septum should always be examined thoroughly because it is usually involved in nasal fractures so its evaluation is must before the treatment is planned if the impact force is weak nasal displacement is usually present without septal fracture so detailed history is must and in the history if of course there will be history of trauma so if uh, history of trauma we should go for that uh, what was the force its direction mechanism and location of the injury as well as direction of the force is very important along with its severity of injury you will have an idea whether there was nasal bleeding at that time any facial trauma or surgery before so that we must have an idea that deformity is due to the present trauma or it was already there any functional impairment before the trauma then we should go for bruising of the skin and subcutaneous tissue over the nasal bones and along the eyes tenderness over the fracture side swelling crepitus and mobility of the fracture fragments deformity externally or internally sometimes due to the edema or the swelling the deformity could not be assessed properly it may hide the deformity at the time of presentation then any nasal obstruction causing the difficulty in breathing excessive epistaxis so periorbital ecchymosis that will give us an idea that the force and magnitude was extensive and injury may not be limited only to the no nasal bones but it may have gone to involve the orbital rim or floor of the orbit or the maxilla crepitus nasal deformity lacerations of the nasal skin bruising 
So on physical examination, of course, there will be evidence of nasal fracture. On clinical examination, that there may be edema, tenderness, deformity, crepitus, step deformity. Then nasal airway evaluation is must for obstruction or septal hematoma if it is there or septal deviation if it is there. Go for skin lacerations, ecchymosis, epistaxis and cerebrospinal fluid rhinorrhea. If the trauma was very extensive, for example, road traffic accident, it was very severe. We should think about So, as I told you, acute edema may hide the deformities, but still a careful search for intranasal injuries must take place. So, adequate lighting, patient should be placed in a comfortable position. If some bleeding is there, that can be controlled with vasoconstrictor drops so that we can examine the nasal cavity properly. If any retained blood clots are there, they should be removed with suctioning or swabbing and we should go for search of septal hematoma or any septal deformity. A cotton tipped swab can be used instead of finger for palpation of the nasal septum for its deformity and mobility of its fragments. So best diagnosis will be on physical examination. So bimanual palpation is must for tenderness, for step deformity, for crepitus and then we can go for radiological examinations, x-rays, plain x-rays, they may or may not show the fracture. So, patient should not be dismissed as having no fracture because x-ray did not reveal it. And x-rays, different views should be there, water's view, then we should go for x-ray nasal bones right and left view. And even we can request for occlusive view that is with the dental film inside the oral cavity and then the x-ray is being taken to see especially the fracture of the floor of the nasal cavity. So when uncomplicated nasal fracture is suspected, plain x-ray films are rarely indicated but still they have got a medical legal importance. So that's why we should go far. Uh, but sometimes plain x-rays, they will not identify the cartilaginous disruptions. So here I want to make a point that the management plan for a particular patient will not depend upon our findings on plain x-rays because for example, if there may not be a fracture available or visible on plain x-ray but still it may be depressed on the say ipsilateral side and patient will be having a deformity and we have to manipulate and realign these nasal bones later on. In contrast, there may be a green stick uh, fracture line or hairline fracture on plain x-rays, but there will not be any deformity, obvious deformity. So no further treatment may be required, but medical legally, we need the plain x-rays. So keep in mind this thing. Then in extensive traumas or when we are suspecting the cerebrospinal fluid rhinorrhea, then CT scan is the uh, treat, uh, investigation of choice. So that will not only, you know, localize the site of, but the extent of that. So with that, we come to end of uh, this session. In part two, we will continue with the treatment our management of a patient with fracture, suspected fracture nasal bones. So if you like uh, the content of our discussion, then please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you very much.